here we have in your presence, because you said it, said unto the Lord, shall the gathering of his people be. He said, where we gather together in your name, you are there. Here we have more than two, more than three, much more than that, and in your name. So we know you are here because you are always true to your word. Therefore, Heavenly Father, our eyes are on you. Your word, the dissemination of your word is the major way by which you reach out to your people. So by your word this morning, reach out to everyone hearing me. And as even those that will yet hear me after this recording, by this word today, reach out to everyone. Cause everyone to hear your voice that turns and translates and transforms lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm still on the principles of the keys of the kingdom. We have been talking on the subject of the kingdom of God since this year began. And interestingly, that was the only message Jesus preached. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he kept talking about the kingdom, about the kingdom. And we have been talking on those dimensions, the uh, various dimensions of the kingdom. And now I'm on the series of the kingdom principles of keys. We just read from the Bible reading, which also is repeated in Luke chapter 8 and verse 10. He said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Or the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It is given you to know because you are in the group of people that you know. We, I explained that last week. You are among his disciples. You get it? He said, but to others, they don't have that privilege. And we knowing also, it's not just for knowing. It is so that we can apply the same principles. Are you following me? In our lives, for us to reign in life. The mysteries of the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom. I think I have something here. I have a bunch of keys here. These are all keys, right? They open different places in this place. If I give you this, what can you do with it? Not much. You still have to know which key opens where. You get my point? That's still knowledge plays that part. So it gives, that's why I say it is given unto us to first and foremost know. Not just know the keys of the kingdom, but the way they operate. Amen. The way they operate. And all through his earthly ministry, he kept teaching us, showing us the ways of the kingdom. That was why his life and ministry was really an amazement to others. Because even to the Jews who are religious, it looks contrary many times. Do you understand me? He will tell them, this is how you have been doing it, but I'm saying to you now, from now, this is it. And he so demonstrated the same to them and showed them the ways of the kingdom. The one that struck me most, I've always said it, I always said it. One time it was to pass through Samaria and the people didn't want him to pass through the place. Then two of his disciples, John and James, they were brothers. They came to him, said, Master, let us call down fire now and destroy them like Elijah did. Uh, right? Did Elijah call down fire and destroy people? Yes, he did. Was Elijah a man of God or not? Yes, he was. So, I mean, they should have a point in saying that. And then Jesus said, no, 
you do not know the spirit you are made of. That means something has changed between that dispensation and this dispensation. But they didn't know that. So that's all we are talking about. Knowledge is key. A lot of people have been saved for centuries, but gained no knowledge of the kingdom. So they could not manifest as children of the kingdom. It's very important. That knowledge, and that's why we have been teaching on it for some time. And let me refresh us a little bit about some things we've said on these keys. Number one, we said principles means first law. That's what principles mean. First law. Not the second, because principles are fundamental. One of them, I don't know whether the word I'm about to use now is correct. I want to say that one of the most common that is most uncommon, uh, if we put it together. And I don't like the word common because it commonizes things. But I will say it again. Somebody is looking for you. One of the most common principles of the kingdom is the use of the tongue. And it's the one we violate most. True or false? You get my point now? It's the one we violate most. It, that means your mouth controls your life. Your mouth controls the happenings of your life. And if you take a little break, I said, really? I don't like my life the way it is now. That's where your mouth has carried it to. It will be tough for some people to see that. You know, you, you use an example of a sheep. You see ships. Ships. Some ships are bigger than this whole area put together. And yet they are controlled by a little ruder underneath that turns it everywhere. That, he said that's how the tongue is. But that's one of the primary fundamental principles of the kingdom. The use of your mouth. He said life and death are in the power of what? The mouth. We violate it so freely, so easily. I said, we are in this world, but we are not of this world, like Jesus said. So, because we are not of this world, though we are in this world, it also, if you are not of this world, you must be from somewhere else, right? And we have established that we are from heaven. You get my point? Jesus said, though we are in this world, we are not of this world. And you know, the world talks of sphere of existence. Two of us are in this room now, but we can be in totally different worlds. You know that. So, in our said, because you know you are in this world, but you are not of this world, you have to learn the ways of your world to live here. We have been in, the, in this world before. Remember, we talked about that earlier. And Jesus delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and brought us into a new kingdom. Right? We have been raised in this kingdom. We are totally used to everything here. And this kingdom is practically the domain of Satan. Is the, king, the Bible calls him the God of this world. So we are used to that. But then we get saved. And when you get saved, it's a spiritual bath on the inside. The mind is still the same. You get my point? Your nose didn't grow shorter because you got saved, did it? You still look the same. In fact, somebody sees you don't know anything has happened to you. How do they first know something happened to you through your mouth? Uh, they say you are talking funny now. Are you following me? You are talking religion. <laughs> That's how they saw you here. Uh, something has happened to her. 
Do you get my point? So now you are in this kingdom. And Peter tells us, when you come into this kingdom, you don't come as an adult. You come as an infant. Nobody is born an adult. You are born again means you are born an infant. An infant grows on meal of food. He said, as, desire, as newborn babes, right? Desire the sincere milk of the world that you may grow. But then, if you come into this kingdom and you are not receiving the word, you are not growing. In the world, everybody sees you growing, but you are not growing in the spirit. And if you are not growing in the spirit, you are like an infant adult, <laughs> if I can use that word. Do you get my point now? But nobody sees that in the physical, but that's how you are in the spirit. So anything of the spirit overwhelms you. Are you following me? So if you are going to take control, you must do what? Grow. Spiritual growth. That's why we read also from Romans 12. It said, be not conformed to this world, but be you what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we have talked about all that. To be able to draw on the benefits and the privileges of this kingdom, you grow in knowledge. And growing in knowledge also equals growing in grace. And we have also said, every kingdom has its code of ethics. Just like all of you have different professions here and there. I think, you, did you tell me you are doing here now? Then you've got to come and do this one before I can know whether you are really doing it. And then you, you plate it for me. Amen? Now, are you hearing me? Every kingdom has what is code of ethics. When you violate the code, in any profession here, what do they do? They would realize this. Is that not what they do? You violate it, okay. They give you first warning. Second warning. Third time, you won't hear warning again. They just take the paper from your hand. It's closed. You see, it's the same in the kingdom of God. When you violate the ethics of the kingdom, we suffer the punishment through Satan. You see, how many of us know the story of Job? Job in the Bible. How many of us know the story of Job? What's going on? Did you hear me? Job. How many know the story of Job? Can I see your hand? Okay. There is no Job where you came from. Now, Job, this is where I say you don't judge people because you, don't, you, you never know the story. Nobody knew the transaction between God and Satan about Job. All that people had was that Job was sick. He lost everything. Then his friends came. And when his friends came, and you see, they, they, they operated with the knowledge they had. And they began to condemn Job, saying, because Job was saying, look, I've not done anything wrong. I'm righteous before God. Let me just find God and let me make my case to him. And they said, who are you to talk to God? You get my point? If you are righteous, why did all this befall you? That you must have done something in secret. Now God has exposed you openly. But you see, they were wrong because they didn't know the story. That's all. But what they were saying were right in themselves. If you understand what I'm saying. Then when God came, God said to them, you people, you condemn Job without knowing the story. That's all they were wrong about. So you see, everybody knew when you violate the code of ethics of the kingdom, you suffer for it. And Jesus said, it is given to you and I as children of the kingdom to know. 
Why? So that we don't violate it. It is said, ignorance is no excuse in law. Hey God, I don't know that I should not be talking like this. That's your problem. As long as your mouth is running like tap water, you suffer the consequence. Whether you know it or not. There are a lot of things we do. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. But you see, even when it comes to giving, it's not just the giving of it. There is a lot before the actual giving that makes the giving work. But many people don't understand that. So understanding is key in this kingdom. Knowledge is key. That's why you see many of us have been going to church all our lives and we are puzzled. Why am I not? All these things the, these preachers normally preach as if God is everything. Where is he? And like I said in two weeks ago, it is true. God is everywhere. You don't need to look for him. He's already everywhere. Are you following me? But whether he will manifest himself for you there or not is a different ball game. I'll give you an example. How many of us know the story of Elisha? You're all looking at me again. Elisha was a prophet of God. And one day, the Syrian army discovered that this man, though, is in Israel, he knew all their secrets. So every time they plan to wage war against Israel, Elisha has told the king, this, well, the, this, that's where they are coming from, and the people are already waiting. But, you know, in this world, they say, we have a spy among us. Who is telling them what we are planning? And somebody said, no, there is no spy. There is one man called Mazi Elisha from uh, Elder's Village, you know, in, out there. He knows all your plans here, even before you plan it. Then the king said, let us go and capture him. Right? Okay? Then they sent their army to where Elisha was. And the servant of Elisha went out of the house in the morning and saw the whole place surrounded by the Syrian army. And he ran to his master and said, Master, we are dead. Let's just say, what's going on? He said, behold, the Syrian army all around us. And Elisha said, relax. There are more for us than against us. The man looked around. He didn't see anybody for them. All he could see was what? The Syrian army. Uh, so you see this, my, uh, my, my master, he always talks for me. Because I can't see anybody. I can only... And then Elisha prayed, God, open his eyes before he kills himself. And then this is the most interesting part. The Bible records, I can go there, but let's save time. And when God opened his eyes, he saw chariots of fire all over the mountains, round about Elisha. If two of us are in the same place, and there are chariots round about, they have to be round about both of us. But the way the Bible records it is they were round about Elisha. They were not there for the man who doesn't believe. You get my point now? So the angels of God are everywhere. God is everywhere. But for him to show up for you, to manifest for you, is now determined by the operation of your faith. Amen? It's now determined by you operating these principles of the kingdom. Glory to God. Then I thought on one more thing before, let me see, because I always refresh our memories. We read from Matthew 22, 21. Please put that one up. A very powerful statement that Jesus made. They came to him one day. The Bible says to tempt him. And they said, Master, should we pay tax to Caesar or not? Now you need to understand this. The Jews were under occupation at that time. They were under the Roman occupation. You know the history? Do you, do you people do history in school? Okay. Now watch. At that point in time, they were fighting for their liberation. So they don't like Caesar. 
you get my point. It's, an, it's, an, it's, it's a colonial name force. And here was Jesus preaching about their liberation of the, by the kingdom of God, by the power of God. And they came to him, should we pay to Caesar or not? That was a temptation. Because he himself physically was still under the rulership of Rome. Do you get my point? He now said, bring me a coin. And they brought him a coin. And he said, whose inscription is this on the coin? You know, the way they print coins. And they said, Caesar's. <laughs> then he made this remarkable statement. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And unto God, what is God? God's. So that's a very remarkable statement. And I bring that statement into a context. You know, we always say it in America that you can kill a person in front of the judge and get a good lawyer and you will still go free. You know that? Do you know that? You think American system is okay, judge justice system is okay, is for the rich. I think you know that. But then go ask the rich whether they can escape when they don't pay tax. Most rich people have gone to prison in America on financial matters, particularly tax issues. A young man killed people in this America and they went to court and the judge says, he's too rich to go to jail. Did you read that? Too rich? They call it one term, right? Affluenza. He's too rich to go to jail, so go home. <laughs> but let him not pay his tax. He will go to jail. So we know how to give to Caesar what is Caesar's. But we relax when it comes to giving to God what is his. But when we enter into trouble, we do what? We call on him. We don't call on Caesar, we call on him. So you see, that's what I'm saying. Violating the ethics of the kingdom, excuse me, is what will make it work for us. So we've talked about all that. Let me try and see how far I come to into today. And then another question I asked last time was, if the kingdom of God is this refreshing and powerful, why is it not manifesting in our lives, establishing our dominion? And we answer is the question, number one, because of our unbelief. That's number one. Jesus said it. They said, Master, why could we not cast him out? He said, well, primarily because of your unbelief. And I'm going to number two today, which is in itself the lack of the knowledge of the principles that makes it work for us. What did I say? Who can repeat that? Uh -uh, you see? I just said it. Oh. Let me see who can say it correctly as I say. Okay. Yeah. No? Yes, you are stopping halfway. I didn't ask you to stop halfway. You have to go through. I said the lack of the knowledge of the principles that makes it work. Who can say it now? No, no, no. You are saying it to me. You are not saying it to yourself first to be sure of what you are saying. Who can say it? Good. That's the major problem. And I want to start on that today and see how far we go. Come with me to Matthew chapter 13 and see this. Verse 15. Matthew chapter 13 and from verse 15. You know, they came to Jesus because he was always talking in parables, right? And they went to him and said, Master, we read that this morning. I mean, if you want to speak the truth, just tell them the truth. Why do you always talk to them in parables? And then Jesus said, is that a verse I called? 15, okay. And Jesus said, look, 
To them that are outside, I will speak in parables. I explained that last week. You can get the message on YouTube for last week. And he now went further and said this. This is the reason why I speak to them in parables. He said, because these people's heart is wax gross. Now watch. And their ears, he talked about their heart first. Number two. They are hears. Are you following me? They are hears are dull of hearing. And number three, what? Their eyes are closed. Those three things are the key elements of your life. Well, somebody will say, where is the mouth? I'm coming. You see, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. The mouth don't control itself. The mouth, the mouth, once it's loaded here, the mouth will speak. So you see the point now. So watch. Now he now said, I want you to see something. We call it the, the law of retrospect. When you turn things upside down, you look at it. He now said, lest at any time they should what? Please read with me. They should what? No, read. Not preach. They should what? Good. Finish it. Number one. He said, lest they should see with their eyes. Number two. Continue reading. And they should what? Hear with their ears. Number three. And then understand with their heart. Then what happens? When you hear with your, when you see with your eyes, hear with your ears, and eventually you understand, you become converted. So you see the process, conversion is a process. Not just necessarily the conversion of being born again in itself. Even to be born again. How many times is, have people preached to you before you got saved? If you ask me, they even give up on me that this one can never be saved. They told me to my face that they used to call me out of stone because when preachers just laugh at them. How many times do they laugh at you when you are preaching to somebody? Because they don't understand what you are talking about. You can see it, they don't understand it. But once they understand, they become converted. And when they are converted, please, can you read the last statement for me? I'd like you to read that last part out loud. I say loud. Are you sure that's what he says? Are you sure? You see, you are not even sure. You are seeing it, but you are not sure. Can you read it if you are sure? So you see, the healing is not a problem. He said, if they get to this point, I can't stop it. I have to hear them. Are you following me? So we want to look from today, those steps that get you to a point where God cannot say no. I repeat it. Look, he said, they should see with their eyes, number one. What's number two? They should hear with their ears, number three. Now they understand with their heart, and then they are changed. And if they get to that point, I will heal them of whatever. So I want to, you to see, that's what we are talking about, the process. I repeat the steps. If you see with your eyes and hear with your ears and understand with your heart, you will definitely be changed. And once you are changed, you will be healed. Delivered, blessed, whatever you can now use, use that word. You are there. God bless me. Don't start from there. He start from seeing with your eyes. And of course, now let me go to that first. Uh, maybe I will only touch that today. What is he saying about seeing with your eyes? Are you blind? No, it's not talking of physical sight. 
I'm talking to you. All of a sudden, I said, do you understand what I'm saying? I said, Pastor, I'm trying to. Then all of a sudden, I said, oh, I see now, I see. You are not talking of this. You, can, you are talking of something inside. Are you following me? So he's talking of seeing with your eyes. Many eyes are not seeing eyes. I'm not saying they are blind. Do you get my point? In fact, look at this example in Luke 24 after resurrection. The Bible says two of his disciples were on their way to Galilee or so. And then he joined them. They were what? His disciples. That means they knew him physically, right? Do you understand me? They were with him physically. But after resurrection, he was he joined them. And they didn't know him. Not that they didn't see. They were talking with him. But let me read the language of scripture for you. Verse 15, Luke 24. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, reasoned himself, not somebody else, put it up, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But look at verse 16. He said, but their eyes were holding that they could not see him. Not that they didn't see him with physical sight. You get the picture on us. That's what we are talking. Many people have eyes, but they don't see. They are, I said, put it up, verse 16. But their eyes were holding. I like them to see it. Their eyes were holding, but they could not see. Luke 24. Okay, let me continue. So, you see, look at Abraham. All of us know the story of Abraham. It's very popular. The Bible says, after that lot was separated with him, from him, right? And God said to Abraham, look you to the north, the south, the east, the west. All the land that you see, I will give you. And we know the land they gave him. Could you stand in one spot and see all of that physically? Do you get my point? But, so he was not talking of the physicality of sight. He was talking of the highs of the mind. That's why Ephesians tells us that the highs of your understanding become enlightened. Amen. So we come to that point. That's what the Lord Jesus was saying. And God said to Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, I will give to you. And we preach that today, that if only you can see it, you will have it. You get my point? It's the sight that we're talking. That's why the Bible says, for we walk not by sight, but by faith. It's the eye of faith. We walk not by sight, but by faith. And I love the way Isaiah 11 verse 3 puts it. It says something very clear. This clears it up. Please, I need to see this up. Isaiah 11 verse 3. He was talking of Christ in prophecy. Right? He was talking of Christ in prophecy. And he said, He shall not judge by the sin of his eyes, not by the hearing of his ears. Let me read that clearly for us. Isaiah 11 verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by the sight of his eyes. That's physical sight. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. You know, I can come to you now. I said, do you know what Michaela did to me yesterday? She slapped me. You heard me. You saw me. And you can judge instantly. I said, I didn't do that. I didn't. But a man of the spirit said, okay, I've heard you. Let me see. 
and then go to ask, and he's hearing another story. How do you judge? Do you get the point now? So it's not about this. That's why he's saying the Christ, Christ will not judge by all these physical things we run around. That's the sight and the hearing. All this stuff. He said, but go to verse 4. But with righteousness, he said, shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the make of the heart. He sees beyond what we see. He hears beyond what we hear. You get my point? You remember there was a time after he performed some miracles, the Bible says they wanted to come and make him king. Particularly when he blessed them with bread. And the Bible says he did not commit himself unto any man because he knew them. And he knew what was in them. It's the same people who came a few years later and said, kill him. <laughs> How many friends do you have today? They are smiling at you. Do you know what they are saying inside about you? Yeah, I love you. I love you. But inside, I will kill him. Can you see that? You can see it. <laughs> you get my point. So the sin of the sight is beyond what he's talking about. Not all eyes are seen eyes. And I don't mean they are physically blind. In fact, the Bible says, Proverbs 12, look at it, verse 12, Proverbs 20, verse 12. The Bible says, the seen high. Can I hear you say the seen high? Seen. Should you be saying that seen high? You should just say the high, because high sees, right? But he said, the seen high and hearing here. So you see, I will talk about that next week. Not all years are hearing ears. You know, you have raised kids. This child, she doesn't hear me. But is it? No. But you know, in terms of physical hearing, he is hearing you, but you know what you mean when you say, it doesn't hear me. That's what the Bible is talking about. Hearing here. I will talk about that next week. But he said, the same hearing here and the seeing high, God made them both. That's why God said, now, what do we mean by seeing high? Proverbs 23 and verse 26 says, my son, give me your heart. And in giving me your heart, let your eyes observe my ways. So the seeing high is the high that observes his ways. Amen. The seeing high. No, move to Proverbs 23, verse 26. The seeing high is the high that observes its ways. 23, 26. So when you don't see what you must see of God, then he cannot begin to perform. Because it is as far as your eye sees that it will give to you. You get the point now? I come to you, you say you have a challenge, and I speak a word to you, a word of faith. But you can't receive it. Then God can perform it. Because you must be able to, by faith, receive it before you can perform it. That's why he says, as far as your eyes can see, I will give to you. So the highest that see is the high that is observing his ways. I have a few more minutes, and I will use this. Luke 19, from verse 42. When you don't see with your eyes, you are likely to fall. You will not fall. I say you will not fall. 19, verse 42. Luke 19, verse 42. Now watch carefully. It says, if you have known, you see that word knowledge again, at least in this thy day, there are things that belong to your peace. There are things that belong to your peace that you must know. That's what we are talking, knowing the principles of the kingdom to walk by them. Because they make for your peace. They establish your dominion. He said, if you have known them. The only reason he's saying if you have known them is because they don't know them. 
He said, if you had known the things that belong to your peace, he said, but now they are hid from your eyes. Those things belong to your peace, but they are hid from your eyes. So you pray, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes to see the things that belong to my peace. Open my eyes, Lord. Of, you know that scripture is up. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. He's not saying he's physically blind. How many times you pick this book and you are reading, and then another day you are reading the same place and you saw something, and they didn't just print the book. <laughs> it's not a reprint. It's the same book. Do you understand me now? And your eyes just open to it. So that's why we pray. Lord, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy Lord. Now I continue reading that. He said, and because they don't see what they ought to see, the Lord Jesus Christ said, verse 43, he said, but the days shall come upon thee that your enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee on a, in on every side. Why? Because you don't know. Your eyes don't see. He said, verse 44, and they shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another. Now, look at the last statement. Can somebody read it? Verse 44, 44, first. 44, first. I like them to see. Because somebody says, a punch in the high is better than two in the air. So see, when you see something, you are able to hold on to it better. That's why I do what I do. <laughs> read from because for me, somebody. No, from because, the last part. Read, read properly, read sharp. Because you don't know, that's why you are falling. Because you don't know, that's why your enemy grants you down. You don't know the things that belong to your peace. It's already yours, but you don't know. So you don't know the time of your visitation. Because you don't. So you are just, we are all in the same shoes. We are children of God, no doubt. God is our father, no doubt. He has made all things available for us, no doubt. But what do we know? That's what the Lord Jesus is saying. It's not because you knew us not the time of your visitation. So I pray again, may your eyes be truly opened. He said, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You know, Ephesians, we read that prayer, that the eyes of your understanding become enlightened. Then we know. John was talking in First John. He said that which was from the beginning, which we have seen. You have to see it. Your faith must capture it, which we have seen, which our eyes have looked upon, then our hands have handled. So these are fundamental principles. We go to church. Thank God we go to church. We've been in church all our lives. Some of us are even born inside church. But that don't mean anything. Except you begin to acquire, are you following me? The knowledge of how things work. You have to acquire that. You have to get at that. Amen? See with your eyes. The seeing eye, God made it. Lord made my eyes seeing eyes. If you are going to pray, help me to see what I must see that will establish my peace. Amen. I will continue next week with the hearing here because not all hears are what? Hearing hears. Like I told you, this is the nightmare of every mother. If I don't hear me, I've been shouting all along. He didn't hear me. Or she didn't hear me. Ask any mother, they will tell you that one. But, but the boy is not deaf, right? All the things you are saying in terms of physical hearing, he's hearing. But you know he's not hearing because he's not entering. That's what the word is talking about. We'll talk about that next week. Rise up on your feet. I need you to pray today, Lord. Open my eyes. There are things that belong to my peace. I don't want to keep walking in ignorance. There are things to know. Open my eyes. You remember where we started from? He said, lest they should see with their eyes 
and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and be converted and I will definitely heal them. 